Hey, all P here out on the trap line. Last day, I've already shot a couple videos. We just got to another spot I want to talk about for a minute. We got another mink today, so that's two today. But I want to show you this spot. This is a great spot. So a couple years ago, I think I caught eight muskrats here. I've caught mink here every year. There's this rock here. There's a little pathway back behind it, and you can see my number 11 sitting right there. And then we got this cubby back there. You see my sardine tin back there. And this, there's an overhang here, so it's safe. So rats will come up in here because they're not in danger of a bird of prey getting them if they come out of the water. Got a cubby, got sardines back there. And then I have another, I had another number 11 right at the base of the hole, okay? And so over here we got Lily with, with another really good sight. It's a good mink. It's not the biggest I've caught down here, but it's a nice buck, nice buck mink. So our last day, uh, last day on the line, just we just ran this for a week. Uh, we've got, what do we caught? Three raccoons and and three mink and a bunch of other uh, feral cats. We trap feral cats down here too for the landowners. Before we start freaking out about feral cats, understand they kill about 60% of the birds. So as I have thinned out the feral cats, the nest raiders like skunks and, and, and raccoons and the foxes, the, the quail population's gone from about 15 to over 100. We see, I see pheasants down here all the time. There's partridge starting to come in. So before you dump your cat off, cause you don't want it anymore, just you better off taking it out and shooting it or taking it to the vet or the, the pound and having them put it down because releasing, feral, releasing cats out in the wild does not help. They're not natural, they're an invasive species. So don't be freaking out on me about feral cats. But anyway, um, this is a great setup. So I'm gonna show it to you again path back behind that rock cubby back there had a number 11 there got a number 11 there any way a mink or a rat comes into this it's gonna hit one of these traps notice there's no muskrat crap on the rock most years that's covered with muskrat crap so again like i said in my other videos on this line muskrat populations are way way down out here and i know it's because there are so many mink which is why i'm hitting the mink hard I'm leaving the rats alone. We caught one muskrat right here on the first day, I think. Um, and that's that's it. So I, I'm not targeting rats down here this, this year. Anyway, we're going to get on down the line. Remember, oh, and as you notice, again, number 11 double long spring on that mink. Good pad catch, you know. Um, d don't use, re resist the urge to use giant traps for water critters. I understand a lot of beaver trappers like those number fives. I use them too on drowning sets, but... But, uh, but you know, my favorite beaver traps are number four, uh, double long. And the biggest beaver I've ever caught in my life was in a number two and I'll buy it by the front foot. So, so I get why beaver trappers use bigger traps, but on these mink and, and coons, you don't need a giant trap. Use a number 11, they're great traps. And if, you, if you're worried about the pan size being too small, well then you just gotta become a better trapper and make sure the animal steps where you want it to. But those number 11 sleepy cricks are deadly. Nothing's coming out of there. I've caught my thumb in him before, and I took me forever to get my thumb out of the stupid thing. I mean, they're just strong, tiny, compact traps. They're perfect for raccoons and me. All right, remember, God is great. Guns are good. Freedom is precious.